In Calc BC, we're covering section 4.1. We left off with our first video, almost done with example one. Uh, you can see what's happened, just recapping. We took our derivative of our function. We found out where our derivative was going to equal zero. We found there were two x values. Uh, there was no place where the derivative was undefined, so we didn't have to worry about that. But we evaluated our function. We plugged in our endpoints, uh, f of negative 4, f of 2. We plugged in our critical numbers. That's where our derivative is 0 or undefined. That's negative 3 and 1. You can see pretty clearly we're going to have a largest uh, value of y at 18. You know, 40 divided by 3, you know, that's a little bit bigger than 13. Uh, so I'm going to say that we've got an absolute max of 18 at x equals negative 3. Remember that maximum and minimum values are y values. But the way we're writing this, it's uh, about as informative as we could ever get. We're not only stating what those extreme values are, we're also stating where they occur. The smallest y value, I think you can see, is negative 10 over 3. So we're going to say our absolute minimum is negative 10 over 3 at x equals 1. So you could say absolute max is or absolute max of. It, it's really the same language. You could use either one of those. Uh, we're done with number 1. Let's take a look at number 2, and we'll try and do this uh, you know, on the interval from negative 2 to 1. f of x, of course, is really uh, x plus 1 raised to the 1 third power plus 3. And I'm going to take my derivative, and we'll bring down that 1 third, and we'll have x plus 1 to the negative 2 thirds power. The chain rule should be considered, but the derivative of x plus 1 is just a 1. The derivative of 3, of course, goes away. So as we clean this up, we can quickly see that we get 1 over 3, and here's our x plus 1 to the 2 thirds power. Now, if we were to set our derivative equal to 0, it won't take long to see that this fraction will never equal 0. I mean, think about it. You could cross multiply if you'd like. You'd get a very confusing statement of uh, getting zeros equal to 1. However, your derivative is undefined when the denominator goes to 0 and the numerator is not going to 0. So that would be at x equals negative 1. So uh, f prime of x doesn't exist at x equals negative 1. There's only one critical number to speak of. It's that negative 1 right there. And uh, what we will do is find our endpoints, f of negative 2. Here's f of 1. Uh, but we're also going to find our critical number, f of negative 1. Now, of course, when we're talking about f, what we're really dealing with is we're plugging these x values into the original function. And let's do that. If I plug in negative 2, negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. And the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1 itself. Negative 1 plus 3 is a 2. f of negative 1, well, negative 1 plus 1 is 0. The cube root of 0 is 0. 0 plus 3 is 3. When I plug in a 1, however, 1 plus 1 is 2, so I'd be left with the cube root of 2, which does not simplify, plus a 3. Now, even without a calculator, of course, a calculator could have been utilized to, to get a decimal, especially for this last one. Uh, I hope you can see, even without a calculator, that we can know which of these y values is largest. Clearly, 3 is larger than 2. But the cube root of 2, I guess I just want to let you know that the cube root of 1 is 1. So the cube root of 2 would be larger than that. So the cube root of 2, even if you didn't know it was about 1.414, 1 
you could still know that the cube root of 2 being larger than 1 when you add it to 3, this would be the largest y value that we'd ever have. So we can say we've got an absolute maximum of, writing this out, the cube root of 2 plus 3 at x equals 1. If we were to look at the smallest y value, I think it's pretty clear it's 2. We'd say we've got an absolute min of 2 at x equals negative 2. So you can see we can get our extreme values, absolute maximum y value, absolute minimum y value, uh, very quickly. Again, it's a common theme. Find out where your derivative is 0 or where your derivative is undefined. Those values are critical numbers. We need to make sure our critical numbers fit in our boundary in the interval that we're given. If they don't, we throw them out. But then we check our endpoints, we check our critical numbers in the function. The biggest y value that you'll see, of course, is your absolute maximum y value. The smallest is your absolute min. For example, three, our last one, I did want to change the problem. So uh, please change your notes to be f of x equals x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. We're also going to change our interval. We're going to go from negative 1 to 2. And, uh, you know, at this point, it might very well seem like this is exactly the same basic uh, type of problem. However, there is something to be very careful about. We are going to need the product rule. And uh, because the derivative of one of these is a bit messy, I'm going to break down this product rule step by step right now. u is equal to x. The easy part, u prime, I hope you can see quickly, is just a 1. But v, which happens to be 4 minus x squared raised to the 1 half, remember square roots are 1 half powers, when I take that derivative, I'm going to need the chain rule. I'm going to bring 1 half down. We'll have 4 minus x squared. And then your new power is negative 1 half. The derivative of the inside is negative 2x. And guys, I hope you can see quickly that this 2 and this 2 will cancel out quickly. And uh, we're going to have a negative and an x. Down below, we're going to have a 4 minus x squared to the 1 half. Remember, a 1 half power is really a square root, so we're going to be left with this. That's just why I wanted to break this down step by step first. You know, the product rule is uv prime plus u prime v. So it would be x times a negative x all over radical 4 minus x squared plus, well now I'd have a 1, times this radical 4 minus x squared. And it's usually at this part where kids look at this and they'll say, well, what's the big deal? Isn't this really just like example 1 and example 2? Except, of course, that our derivative got a little bit ugly. Actually, there is a big, big, big difference here. Please don't set your derivative equal to zero right now. Back in Algebra 1 and in Algebra 2, undoubtedly, even in AMA, I'm sure you very often got rid of fractions. And that can sound so tempting. And by the way, in general, that's a good idea. It's just, it's not a good idea here. You see, we're interested not in just where our derivative could be zero. We also want to know where our derivative is undefined. And if you multiply by your denominator to get rid of fractions, you can lose a critical number. Please watch out. Get one common fraction. I'm going to notice I could get a common denominator by multiplying by radical 4 minus x squared here then what? Well, actually you're going to see pretty quick, pretty quickly, 
that now you have one common denominator. It's this, 4 minus x squared inside your square root. Look up here, a radical times a radical. Uh, you're just going to be left with a 4 minus x squared when you're multiplying these two together. And negative x squared plus 4 minus x squared, you'd get 4 minus 2x squared. Please always join your derivative together, if you have fractions, into one fraction. And of course, right now, that begs the question, why? Why in the world did we do that? Well, we're interested in where our derivative is 0. f prime of x equals 0, where the top equals 0. Where the top equals 0. We can very quickly get some uh, critical numbers in that regard. I'll set the top equal to 0. By the way, if you want to divide by a 2, be my guest. I think that's a very clever thing to do. You can add an x squared. And then take your plus or minus square roots here. And uh, without too much ado here, you've got x is plus or minus radical 2. These are critical numbers. Now, you also are concerned. Here's what can get lost. You're also concerned where your derivative won't exist. Now, your derivative won't exist where the denominator is 0, or technically where the radical inside actually is negative. Uh, and, uh, you know, looking at 4 minus x squared, this is really looking where f prime is undefined. You can say, well, let's just set that equal to 0, just the inside of the radical. Uh, that's the easy thing to solve. You'd get square roots plus or minus 2. And you'd say, oh, so there are four critical numbers here. It certainly appears like it. But listen, there's more to this story, guys. There's a lot more to this story. You're thinking, where could 4 minus x squared even be positive? Because if it were negative, we'd be in trouble. By the way, from the very beginning, that was a parameter in the problem. You can't uh, even talk about derivatives where a function isn't defined. Uh, but if you were to think about how we did this in accelerated math analysis, we set our equation equal to 0, and then we did a test. Like maybe we test x equals 0, and, and that would be something true. Uh, we're defined only between uh, negative 2 and positive 2. So as soon as you venture away from that interval, your radical, you can't even get it to be a real number. So we'll keep that in mind, too. But look, right now, if we went back to the original problem, we'd say, what were our critical numbers? Well, our critical numbers we could see that we had x was equal to uh, root 2, negative root 2, positive, and negative 2 also. Uh, but listen, we're trying to pay attention to the interval itself. Negative radical 2, which is like negative 1.414, it's not in our boundary. It's not between negative 1 and 2. We don't have to work it out. We don't have to you know, get that to... Be considered. Same thing with negative 2. So I'm going to check my endpoints at negative 1. And uh, here I'm going to plug in radical 2. And then I'm also going to plug in the positive 2 as well. I'm going to plug this into the original function. Now if I plug in negative 1, you can see uh, negative 1 squared is 1. 4 minus 1 is 3. So I'd get root 3. I'm going to have a negative out in front. If I plug in a radical 2 here, radical 2 squared is 2. 4 minus 2 is a 2. So I'd be left with a radical 2. But I've got a radical 2 out in front. Radical 2 times radical 2 is a 2. And guys, if I plug in a 2 itself, 2 squared is 4. 4 minus 4 is 0. So here I have my extreme values. I can say I've got an absolute min of negative root 3 at x equals negative 1. I can say I've got an absolute max of 2 at x equals radical 2. 
Guys, if you didn't get your derivative into a fraction, you'd lose some of those critical numbers.